Hello and welcome to this edition of Bayou Time. I'm your host, Keith Weissat, licensed clinical social worker with Terrible Home Care. Very glad you're joining us. However you may be joining us, we appreciate it very, very much. Uh, and so we are glad to welcome in the people that are helping lead, the people that are helping take care of our wonderful community. Welcome back to the program, Sheriff Tim Sonier. Tim, thanks for being here. Thank you, Keith. Uh, well, Terrible Home Parish is better off for you and your team. And one of those things is we always like to kind of find out, you know, we get to see you guys on the road. We get to see y'all patrolling. We get to see you at so many different events. Tell us how things are going at the sheriff's office. Well, I mean, considered since Hurricane Ida, I mean, I, I, some of the infrastructure things we put in place, obviously during the storm, we looked at our response. What can we do better? Mm -hmm. And I think really capitalize on infrastructure. Some of the things that we were able to do now we can better serve i mean i'll give you an example um we're going to be breaking ribbon very shortly in our criminal investigative division right. however that's our old motor pool on capital right. however it's also emergency response capability there so there's a lot of things we've learned um from the storm that we're able to do better right and slowly but surely making more room for our our growth and we are growing right and so they're not really on top of each other, but we create a better work environment to better serve our community when it comes to the, the criminal side that's going out there because, you know, we try to take care of the victims and having an, an ultimate environment for our officers that can thrive to work much more efficient. To me, that's about customer satisfaction so we can bring closure and, and, and helping victims out and creating that environment set on top of one another. Right, and so uh, where, where things were centrally located downtown, and then we had everything with the carpool, or the motor pool, if you will, over on Capitol. Now we've kind of expanded to three different areas yes. to be able to do that. And Not so, all eggs in one basket. Right, right. However, it, we have emergency capabilities on all of them. The uh, on better, all three, right? The better instead of, okay, this is now our headquarters. Well, we got several things going on from the north end of the parish to, the, um, to basically where an old motor pool is and on parts of Savannah Road that we we've, we've been able to expand and, and do much better. Um, give you an example. We have fuel tanks at our multiple. They're still there. My criminal investigative division is there. We have the ability to sustain for about a month and a half with the fuel we have there. Well, we expanded more fuel tanks and diesel tanks in our the, the north end of the parish in gray. Mm -hmm. um, looking at it, once we go into a storm mode and, you know, Hopefully, we never have to deal with that wood Ida. Right. However, for most of our logistics, we can sustain for about three months. Wow. Which we've expanded that capability. Before, it was always, okay, fill up your tanks. Do this. Do this before the storm. Right. Now, we have ability to really sustain, to keep that operational mode, not only from emergency situations like a storm, but just normal day-to-day -day operations. Right. Those so it's, it's, it's our capability. And at the end of the day, we want to better serve our, our community and our people. And that's the most important thing. Yeah. And listen, some people may say, you know, fuel tanks, that's just one thing. That's one small thing. Well, if we look at fuel tanks where you can sustain and you're available and ready for, for up to that three month period, you can make sure that y'all are present. There's no issue with having to go and find gas because, quite frankly, during Ida, we had to go out and find gas well, in other places. We found there was a shift, the shift difference. Like when we get into these modes, we sometimes got to go partner with a gas station. We'll try to get the fuel for you so we can have access to it. We can now, let's get the fuel for you so our citizens will have access. Wow. And shift from us so we can take care of the business we kind of got that taken care of now. So when that storm modes, now we can work with these guys. Like, look, y'all need a generator. What do you need? We can get this store up and running. When we let people, they have a place to get fuel. And doing these things, we I think we better serve. The most important thing on any of these situations from a storm is getting our community back on their feet as quick as possible. Right. And to me, we need to invest in that now where we can shift focus. We kind of got ourselves taken care of. In, in that aspect, now let's take care of our community even better. Because we're sometimes often trying to juggle. Well, we don't have to juggle. That one side's taken care of. We right. made some smart decisions <clears throat> and some good infrastructure decisions now that we can just concentrate on that, which to me is the most important thing. Yeah, and we don't have to share resources. We have That's our correct. own. We're going we're gonna to make sure that we use whatever power we need to bring power, to bring fuel, That's so correct. the citizens have that. That's correct. And then plus the other capabilities, I think we, we've, uh, we've, 
you know, just in general, fuel logistics, um, a, a devastating thing where our officers may have a hard, you know, oh my God, like with our storm, 10% of my office lost their homes. Well, I have a temporary shelter now. I have showers in our new facility. We have the ability to kitchen to make sure we feed our people. If they're family members, we have a temporary shelter set up now until we can get them into something better and set it in, a, in their car. Right. I mean, their mental balance, because they experience the same things every one of our citizens, the most we can take care of them, the quicker they can shift gears and take care of our community. Right. And, and the one big thing for, for most of your people is, is my family okay? Yes. And now you have the capabilities of being able to say, come back. We'll take care of everything. This is how it's done. And it's comfortable. That's right. And that's really the interesting thing to me is that for us, for, for any of us, I think we want to make sure our family's okay. Uh, you've been able to do that and invest in the resources that are needed to make sure that the sheriff's office is much more functional in emergency mode and prepared so that y'all can go out and work and take care of people. And, and the bottom line is we owe that to our people in our community. Well, and, and we appreciate it very, very much. Uh, so, Tim, we always appreciate the updates. We thank you for that. And thank you for your team and what they do. We're constantly giving some positive updates about even some of the difficult things in our area. So thank you to you and your team as we get ready for uh, what I'm hoping is a very, very um, un unimportant storm season. We don't want one that's important to us. Thank you, Keith. All right, appreciate you, Tim. All right, guys, that'll do it for this particular segment. Don't go anywhere. A lot more by you, Tom, when we continue.